I think we need a new mic. All right. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome to the pilot episode of the Power Hour podcast. So if you've it been be. part of this group, this is the action taking event by action takers. We're really glad that you all are here. Um, I'm Jeff Smith. This is Andrew Ariaga and, Jen and Jeremy Montoya. So we're here to have a Q&A session with you guys about all things with investor grade real estate, introduce you to some, some interesting guests we have about how Power Hour got started, what our vision is going forward. And the, this baby here is probably going to be extremely distracting for us for the episode. But that's why it's the pilot and it's going to be awesome. Yeah, exactly. Thank God. So, um, yeah. So let's get uh, let's go again and get started. Regina, come hang out with us. And um, thank you for giving yeah. me the chew on one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can chew on it too. <laughs> yeah, let's not do that. So, right. Regina, like for you know, a lot of people have now seen Power Hour. It's kind of it's gone across the country. But take us to the superhero origin story. Why in the hell did we do this? Yeah. So. For anybody that doesn't know, Jeff and I have been the uh, regional leaders of Houston Sub 2 for about two and a half years now. And when we first started uh, stepped in as the leaders, what we really, really wanted to create was a true community where we have people to do deals with, to uh, run ideas by, and to truly be growing our businesses with. And while we had that to an extent, we had just never truly created the community that we wanted uh, here in Houston. So we were out at uh, at Pace's Golden Ticket event uh, late last year, uh, which was just, you know, uh, an event that he puts on out in Arizona. And one of the things that they did out there is they had everybody sort of get into small groups and actually just get on the Internet and pick some agents and give them a call. And everybody had to do it. So I don't make, you know, calls for our business. I'm our integrator. I'm our systems person. But, you know, when you're around 100 other people making calls, you just make calls, right? It, it sounds suspiciously like what we do here. I know, I know. <laughs> so, so we got we got we got back to Texas, and uh, you know, Jeff and I talked about it, and we we're like, you know, we'd really like to have a place where Jeff isn't just sitting in his office all day making calls by himself. Because what we really liked was kind of the energy that was being created through that uh, through that event. So we said, all right, let's try to get some people together in Houston to just get together and make calls. We'll call our leads together and everybody can just feed off the energy. So we kicked off, uh, I think the second or third week of January. We had it in my apartment. I think we had like six people there, but it worked. You know, people had fun. You know, we got some calls made. Jeff was teaching a little bit about just how to structure these conversations. Uh, so we really liked it. And then the next week, we, uh, we upgraded and we started having our meetup at Rudy's Barbecue up on the north side. Um, and then at that point, you know, we find, found kind of our core leaders. Uh, and so that was super exciting. Like we've been able to grow this from basically six people in my apartment around the dining room table to, you know, we consistently get over 50 people now. And then we, you know, we have to get, you know, places like the title company here at Fidelity or Patent to host us so that we have enough room. And that's awesome. And not only that, like it's now being mirrored in other, you know, communities across uh, the nation. Like people want what we have created here in Houston. But beyond that, we've also been able to find, you know, the people that we are growing our businesses with, like Andrew, Francesca, Juan, Brad, Jennifer, Jeremy. And that's what we've been wanting. And it's been truly amazing. Regina, I have a question for you. So what do you think has... Why, why do you think people keep coming back to Power Hour? Why do you think Power Hour was something that we continue to come back to every single weekend? Because there's no other event like it. Every other event is a networking event or an event where you're just getting pitched services or you're just learning, learning about a topic because somebody's speaking. This is an event where we ask people to take action and there's nothing else like that. I mean, everybody... What's the first rule of Power Hour? Make a call. Make a call. And what's the second rule of Power Hour? Oh, keep making calls. <laughs> no, so the reason I asked that question is because because of Power Hour, we're now, um, you know, people call us and have conversations with us. And I met a connection here in Power Hour. He actually just called me right now, like 20 minutes ago. And he goes, hey, man, I have a seller. He's asking 170. He speaks Spanish. Can you close them for me? 
And I was like, I have no idea what you're doing. I don't know. I don't know anything about the seller. I don't know. I have no, but I walked around. You guys saw me walking around here on, on two phones. And because of a connection that I made on Power Hour, he knows that I speak Spanish. And his response was, hey, I want to lock this up at like 130 to 150. I'm like, great. So then it gives me some wiggle room. So I have a conversation with this seller, figure out his pain, figure out his problem. And a lot of the skills that I've gained was because of what Jeff Smith taught me. But uh, we just got a verbal agreement at 120, 120,000. He wanted to lock it up at 150, right? So it's cool to be able to make connections with people and have interactions with individuals. But the fact that we're actually doing deals together and making conversations, it, it just makes Power Hour so much more special. It's not necessarily, hey, we're just hanging out a traditional networking event. It's more of, hey, we're actually taking action, making calls and doing deals. And we have a killer baby who is probably going to be a billionaire in like 30 years or so. Oh, take the glasses. No, keep the glasses. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. All right. All right. Okay. So that's sort of the genesis of Power Hour. I just wanted to make sure that everybody knows how it started and you know how it's grown over just a few months. So I'd really like actually Jennifer to step up here Hi. And I want you guys to talk a little bit about how you joined the group and uh, how you yeah. took leadership yes, here. Yes, definitely. I do have one more question before oh, yeah, yeah, you do course. leave. Um, I know that it's been, we appreciate you guys, you and Jeff, um, for being, you know, consistent and putting on like the accountability calls and stuff like that. And you guys set the foundation for us to come in and be leaders, right? Um, my question is to you, what do you think makes it so special here in Houston? People are entertaining it in other areas, but something about Houston and what we got going on here, what makes it so special? So the most important thing for us was actually finding a core group of leaders. Um, it was instrumental because honestly, like if it had just been Jeff and I and sort of a rotating group of people coming every week, we would have never been able to maintain it. Uh, being able to develop consistency, I think is one of the hardest things in our businesses, but it's also one of the hardest things in something like that. So if we hadn't had our core group of you and Jennifer and Andrew and Francesca that really stepped up to help us run this every week and to consistently be here, we this would have ended, you know, four months ago. And I think the other thing to augment that is as the leaders started to come here, like you and, and Jennifer and, and Andrew and Francesca, and there, there's a lot of other people who are here right now I can list who I see every week and every week. And it's the culture of what we established. Right. Because you walk into in a group and if they're all a bunch of cutthroats, like you want nothing to do with that. But you come into a culture like this group where it's we're taking action, we're helping each other. Hey, let me take you by the hand and show you how this works out where we're giving tons of value. That's the other thing that draws in people like a magnet, but it, then it repels other people who are not interested in that. So the people who want to be a part of that, that's what draws them in here. And because we have these leaders who bought into that vision and that culture, that attracted so many more people. All right, Jennifer, you ready? Gina White, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Literally stole the baby. The baby's going to steal the show. <laughs> Already did. Yeah. Okay, so what was the question? The question is how we came became leaders how we came into Power Hour. Um, I love telling this story because I remember it was, I believe it was an accountability call we were doing. And this is when you announced, hey, I'm going to do Power Hour. Um, I want to hold myself accountable. And this is Jeff talking. And he's saying, I want to hold myself accountable. I'm going to make calls. Come and meet with me. And I'll make calls for two hours. You can come out and watch me be on the phone or make your own calls and stuff like that. And I remember Jeff saying that. And I was like, I was kind of looking for something like that. Um, I believe you used to do Texas two step. Yeah. So I was actually thinking like, Hey, I wonder if Jeff, I was going to approach you actually and be like, Hey Jeff, do you still want to do Texas two step? Maybe help me get it going. And you know, I'll do it. I know that was by zoom. And when you had announced that you wanted to do uh, power hour, I was like, well, wow, this is awesome. 100%. Like I want to be in this. And I remember calling up Jeff and saying, Jeff, I want to be the leader. I want to help you out with whatever you want. Like, I want to do this. And it was funny. Actually, I missed the first power hour. <laughs> and I had to call Jeff because there was a miscommunication. I thought he was going to start it the next weekend, but he ended up starting in that, that weekend. And 
I remember I missed the first power hour and that's when you had Regina had it at her house. And then I remember texting Jeff and he's like, well, just find a location. So I was like, all right, I can find a location. Went out and I, uh, we found Rudy's. Some of you guys may know Rudy's. <laughs> and um, from there, that's when Andrew came out for that one. I remember that Andrew being there for the first time and how awesome it was because Andrew right away was like, hey, I have a list here. And he just gave out his list and he was giving, letting people call on his list, like right there, right there, like like that. It was just amazing. Funny thing is when Andrew showed up, like you remember he'd bring he'd bring in his laptop and he'd go back out oh, and he'd come in with like two more monitors with him. He's like, damn, this guy is setting up to stay a while. I'll never forget that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you want to touch in a little bit on that? Yeah, it really was just like divine timing um, because Jeremy was, we had just come back from... I think we were traveling and every time we're traveling, we do like a, our own mini mastermind in the car. Yes. Um, and so he had actually been talking to me about, I want to step up and become, you know, more, more of a leader and I want to be somebody that people come to. Um, and so I was like, cool, well, let's brainstorm ideas on how to do that. And so he was like, I'm going to approach Jeff and Regina. He's like, I'm going to talk to the leaders in Houston. And it just so happened that right after we had come back, that's when all of this transpired. So it was just perfect timing. Um, but yeah, it just, it really just started with, you know, Jeff saying, I want to do this. Jeremy said, I want to head it and make sure that it, you know, stays consistent. And Jeremy is the most consistent person I think I've ever seen in my life. Um, and so that's kind of, that's just how it started is we just made sure that we were, we were at Rudy's no later than 8.30 every single Saturday just to make sure that we secured the spot because it was a first come first serve spot. So um, yeah, we were there consistently every Saturday. Uh, Coming from College Station, Texas, which is about an hour and a half away. Yeah. So they were they were making a big drive to come out every Saturday because they, they love the idea of this. But it, so Jennifer, for you, like I know what Jeremy wanted out of this and to be a leader. And maybe yours is a similar, but you in particular, like, what did you see in power? Like, why did you want to be a part of it? Because you could have just put Jeremy in the car and said, yeah, see ya. I was tempted to, I'm not going to lie. I'm like an hour and a half every Saturday. Can you do it? No. Um, the vision that I saw for it was a hundred percent giving to the community. It was like, this is amazing. Like we didn't start power hour because we wanted to make money. Like that was, that wasn't even the goal of power hour to begin with. Um, the whole goal of power hour just from the start was making sure that new people had a resource, like an in-person resource. They could, giving back, yeah. they could come to us and ask questions. They could come to us and be like, I'm scared to get on the phones. Go talk to Jeff. He go talk to Jeremy, go talk to Andrew. Like they will get you on the phones first rule of power hour, you have to make a call. So it, for me, that was the vision is just like the very first thing, the, the first priority of power hour was like giving value, making sure that people had a place to go where they could get questions answered and they can start taking action instead of consuming content. And I think that's the one big difference about power hour. And a lot of you guys keep coming back to this because we do make you guys feel comfortable to a certain extent. I mean, we're all different levels. Some are just getting started. Some don't even know how to spell real estate, right? But we make you guys feel comfortable in a sense to say, hey, if you've never made a call, don't worry. We'll give you a script. We'll give you leads. You can mess them up. You can do what you want with it. But I think that's what makes Power Hour special, to, to Jennifer's point, is that we do make you guys feel comfortable to say, hey, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. But that's okay because I sometimes I don't know what the heck I'm doing when it comes to certain things. And I, I don't, I'm not scared to say, hey, I need help. Right. And everything that we do, we're all everyone. And Pace says this all the time. We don't do one thing by ourselves. We do it with, you know, other people. Right. There's some people in here that do specialize in, you know, single family. There's other people that specialize in multifamily. Right. But the reality is, is like everyone does things together. And I think that's what makes Power Hour so special is that we're willing to give you guys a room, an area, put in the work to say, hey, everyone can then go have a conversation, whatever level they're at. I've seen a lot of growth in a lot of you guys in here in Power Hour. It started off from not even shaking when have a conversation. Like, I don't want to dial this agent. I'm scared. So we're like, just call them. And now they're just blasting out deals Crushing left and right. Yeah. Everywhere. So it's definitely fun. Yeah. 
Yeah. Making and, calls in bathrooms together. Making calls in bathrooms together. Yeah. To now locking up deals. Does anyone have a question? Woo! Jennifer. Jennifer. I'm like yelling in the mic. So Bradley, tell us uh, when you joined Sub2 and then tell us how you joined Sub2 and how did you hear about Power Hour? We'll start there. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm the bathroom guy that, you know, didn't make that call. We should start by explaining what you mean by that. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been in a couple other real estate groups and i got invited out to uh the sub two meetup in houston when pace was coming and i thought all right i'm gonna show up there's gonna be like 15 other people we're gonna talk about real estate find out show up there was what like about, five five hundred people yeah there was quite a yeah there was about, about 500 people yeah. and i was like wow the energy in this room is something different i ended up meeting Gian VA, which she's not here. She usually comes to Power Hour every weekend, and she invited me out to Power Hour. My first thought was, I don't know what I'm getting into. I sure I'll show up. I guess it's another meetup. Next thing you know, I get a text that, hey, the location has changed from Rudy's, and we're going to go to someone's apartment. So my first reaction was, definitely, what am I getting myself into? Yeah, our spot got taken that day. Yeah. <laughs> and so I showed up this apartment and I'm watching everybody just making calls and I just was like, I don't belong here. I'm the I don't make calls. This is not what I'm doing. Everybody was trying to get me to make calls and I flat out refused. And that's where the bathroom story comes in because Andrew was like, We're getting you on the phone. And I was like, I'm not doing it. And Jeff's like, our rule is everybody gets on the phone. <laughs> I just refused. And so Andrew and I, we ended up going, you know, into a quiet place. It just so happened to be the bathroom and I'm shaking. Andrew's like watching me. I'm all nervous. I make that first call and it goes to voicemail. And I'm like, all right, we're good. I made a call. Andrew's like, no, we double dial here. So I was nervous, made the second call, went to voicemail and then found out we need to make a picture, take a picture with everybody and we're ending the day. So I, that was my reason escaping and i ended up not making my first call that that first power hour at least you made the first dial i made the first dial so and, i guess and even I that of... like like and it's okay because like for you at the time and for people who know you like brad's are like well is like happy to talk to you super friendly guy like that first day like you were just like what, who the hell are these people like you're pretty quiet but for you like that first hurdle was just hitting the button on the phone just to make that dial. And so that's what we also emphasize in Power Hour. It's like taking that next level. So like when you come here to Power Hour, like your first hurdle is not to close the deal. Your first obstacle is just to click dial. And then your second obstacle that you hit is having a better conversation and just growing. But um, yeah, super glad you came here. And obviously now you're integrator working with Andrew and you know closing up sub two so yours is you know a great story yeah I remember you coming out to the first power hour like even the first couple you were like very quiet not very and then as time went on it was like all of a sudden you show up and you just had this big old smile on your face and you're like yeah let's make calls <laughs> you're like happy I've ever seen that it was amazing watching you go through that it was that was awesome so I just want to be clear with people too, like when you joined, when you came to Power Hour, were you in Sub 2? No, I was not. So you're saying Power Hour is open to people that are not in Sub 2? Absolutely. Yeah. Are you saying you didn't give us the referral code? <laughs> uh, that that too. Still <laughs> pissing me off. So the, the, the best part about um, Brad's story is now Brad and I, are, we are, we're business partners and we're doing a lot of deals together. Um, but the best part about Brad's story is that he started, he came to Power Hour he saw how crazy we were, but he also saw how giving we were. And so then he realized, holy crap, this whole sub two community that you get, everyone hears about, like there's a reason why everyone gives and gives and gives. And so then a week later he joined sub two and he comes to a second power hour and he's sitting right next to me and he goes, uh, Hey man, I, I pulled the trigger. I I'm in sub two. And I was like, what? Like, that's awesome. Right? I mean, our biggest thing is you don't have to join sub two when you come to power. Like you, you're around us, you guys connect with us, but it's really cool to see Brad's story from 
you know, shaking to make a call to now figuring out who he is, who his identity is. And that's the one, there's a lot of people in here that they shouldn't be making calls because that's not what they're good at. They shouldn't be closing calls because it's not what they're good at. And the best part of this community is that we're not going to, even though, yeah, we force you guys to make calls, right? But the reality is you're not going to sit in that role forever, right? You could grow an amazing business. You could grow, but it's the networks, it's the connections that you make with each other. And you see yourself grow as well, too. You're not, not everyone's going to close deals, right? Not everyone's going to be amazing on the phone like Jeff. Not everyone's going to be an amazing integrator like, you know, Regina and, and, and Brad, but figure out who your identity is. And the more you come to Power Hour, the more you'll understand, hey, I can be just as successful in real estate and I don't have to be closing deals. I don't have to be, I don't know how, I don't need to know how to underwrite, right? So I think that's the best part about Brad's story. He started, came to Power Hour, made a call, joined Sub2, connected with a knucklehead like me to where now we're, you know, we're, we're business partners in, a, in some deals that we're working on together. And we have, you know, a future that we're trying to plan out and stuff like that. But it, Brad is a really good example of, you don't have to be the best caller to be able to have success in real estate. And he, and the reality is Brad didn't have to join sub two. Like you don't have to join sub two to be able to partner up with us and, and do deals with us as well too. So that's why we really like Brad's story. Yeah. Just to kind of piggyback off that. So, I mean, I joined sub two cause I needed just a change in the community and the people in this energy or in this room kind of drew my attention to actually join sub two, but I just want to go more on what you're talking about of finding your role. So I ended up putting about three months of making calls, consistently taking action. That's a big thing is a lot of people will, will fall away. will stop taking action. will stop being consistent and wonder where their success is at. And so that's one thing that I really instilled in my daily routine is I need to take action every day and stay consistent with that. And I did that for three months and I it took me three months to get my first deal, but I kept doing that. I kept showing up to power hour. I kept meeting amazing people like you guys meeting the leaders and just put myself out there. Um, but it ultimately allowed me to realize who my true identity and my true avatar is, which is more of an integrator putting systems, together and so now i've been able to pull away from you know making calls and really hyper focus what i'm good at which is now allowing andrew and i to you know close up deals we close up about four this past month and we have a couple more under contract right now and i've been in sub two for six months all because of consistently taking action and finding my avatar and connecting with the right people the right leaders and meeting new friends and just building out that community so thanks guys <laughs> so i i think at this point are there any more guests we have we got one more oh yeah i'm dude i feel like crap now everybody say hello to uh brandon mellow Brand, I don't remember exactly when we got uh, connected, but I know one of our first conversations was, you know, outreach of, dude, like we're we're seeing what you guys are doing in Houston with Power Hour and this, um, you know, really, and I always talk with Regina about this, and, and Regina hinted at it when we first joined Sub2 a couple years ago, it still was like, we had a nice little community, but it still felt like a revolving door. And it wasn't until Power Hour and it's consistently showed up that we truly felt like we had a community, like where I could partner with Andrew and do direct to seller. I could work with Jeremy on, on different things like that wasn't here yet. And and I know it was something that that you saw and, and wanted to get into. So, you know, tell us about like kind of the, the third party view of of what you've seen for Power Hour. And then, um, you know, anything else that you've noticed maybe in, in other groups who are trying to replicate this. Yeah, and, and for context too, um, I, I'm a part of the sub two team. I work for Pace, um, one of the director enrollments. So I talk to students on the daily and we met at the Arizona event, all this group of people that you know host the power hour. And immediately I, I loved what they were doing. I was just talking to Sean over here. He's still here. There he is <laughs> about, um, you can see, I guess, the community and love of it for it. But when there's people like a driving force, like how each and one of you guys have for everybody and how you pour into it, it it's not 
it's not replicatable. I think uh, the idea is there, but the people do matter. And I think you guys are those people that lead it. And that's what brought me down saying, hey, I'm going to book a flight. I don't think Andrew believed me that I was going to. <laughs> he flew but, He flew here, guys, from Oregon, Eugene, Oregon. Yeah, and then I, I was I was like, hey, I've been here since August what, 18th. Um, Juan, uh, Sepa, man, has been like, hosting me, been dealing with me all, 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 all this uh, time. And I, I wanted to come over here because I want to make sure I can provide value to you guys and to everybody in this room as well with connecting with higher level students, connecting and putting this name of a power hour for Houston out there where the spotlight should be, because I don't think it gives enough justice or credit uh, for the hard work these people do from their businesses to come out for you guys, host it for free, help you guys out with closing deals, underwriting, anything you guys really provide, like many people pay so much even beyond that and really don't even get the result. So the fact that they take their time out of their business, that may spoke to me saying, wow, they have something here and it hasn't been uh, you know, repeatable for anybody else. I've talked to many students who try to do the same. It's not an easy task and it does take a lot from you. And as business owners, as we all do and know uh, how that goes, everything can always be up in the air. And the fact that they still are very consistent with all this speaks so much. So I think you guys know that right at this point and we'll want to pour back to each other. And that's just, I think the Houston love that you guys have. Woo. Um. And regarding, regarding that consistency that you mentioned, Mello, uh, we've actually only missed one Saturday in the whole time that we've had Power Hour. Wow. Right? And so we almost missed last Saturday, but Jennifer and Jeremy stepped up and they showed up earlier than what we thought, which is awesome. But that just goes to show you, like, we're consistently coming. Yes, we're taking time from our businesses. Yes, the things that we're offering, you don't, you don't see that anywhere else. So to Mello's point, you know, we are being very consistent and we want to. Like, it's not like we're coming here. We're dragging our butts. We're not doing, I mean, we're actually here. We have the energy. We have the crowd. Uh, we have everything. So Mello, you, you mentioned you work for, you know, sub two. What exactly do you do in sub two? Like what's your main role? So I'm, I'm Pace's um, primary lender. I'm just going to check. You're his lender, huh? You got some money. Wow. Yeah, no. <laughs> in that case, I have a deal that you might want to find. <laughs> right. Everyone's going to flock to me now. Um, <laughs> No, I'm, so I'm one of his, uh, I, I started out uh, working for Facebook and Google. That's my trade. I actually met, and this is the power of why I love what you guys are doing. I met Pace's top performers, uh, top performing team and Pace himself at a networking event. And I connected with their team and they were like, hey, we like this kid. He may be annoying, but he has some talent. So they gave me a shot. I was a water boy for the first year, doing odd and things, providing value in the back end for what I know for the business. Uh, just some good insights from like my Facebook and Google trades. Uh, to kind of really broadcast it. As you know, Pace is a storyteller, so he loves to do that. So dropping my sons to the marketing team, helping them out with that was really great. And that led to being what I'm at now, which is a director of enrollment. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys are sub two students or not, but for the ones who are, I would be the ones that you would speak to for getting involved, right? Do a whole call that we all know that brought us here today. So that's what I do currently. And Kevin Cho, I'm sure you know, we all know who he is as well. He's a good personal friend of mine before he blew up with everything. And he just always told me, uh, I know you're an entrepreneur at heart and you have a business. I had it for about five, almost six years while I still had sub two. And he pretty much told me he had to decide uh, what to do next. I was pretty scatterbrained. I'm sure some of you guys are with where to start in real estate. But for me, he told me the answer is in front of your face. You talk about it. You're enrolling people. Why not just do real estate? And it took me a while to understand that and to detach from a business, as you guys know, to start one, it's like your first baby. It's very tough to do that, especially for having it for six years in a row. So I decided the real value is here. The community that Pace has grown, the people that they, that they create for leaders to have is un, unparalleled. So it, the answer was in front of my face. I'm like, I got to start doing and um, tap into more of this. And that's where I met Juan. That's where I met Andrew and the great mighty Jedi Master Jeff over here. So uh, it's, it's just been great. And it was so funny how easy it just takes one connection as cliche may seem. It only takes one. And I think that's what you guys have grown the numbers up from here. So to magnetize that, to go back to your point, that's what I do to this day, um, helping out students, providing them value. But I love connecting the ones who I enroll with heavy hitters, primary lenders, TCs, other students who can help them out structure deals. Uh, at times, I'm almost almost like a therapist for most beginners, because as you know, it's very scary. So I just consult with them. I'd be a helping, a, a helping ear. Um, after this, this trip here, I'm going to Orlando to meet some other students down there. Never seen them. 
I rolled them about a year or so ago and I want to have dinner with them or um, Alicia and Kevin uh, for their husband, Orlando, other students there as well, and just pour back. Um, so that's just where my position is at now, the best connector and helper that I can be since I have that internal data for sub two and know who to send you to. So that's where I'm at. Just trying to so if I'm much. thinking about joining sub two, mm -hmm. would you be able to help me with that? If I'm not in sub two and I'm thinking about joining. Yeah. Yeah. I can help you guys out. For me, I lead with the heart is what I do for the calls. So I won't twist your arm to do anything you don't want to, but I will see if it's great for you to do it in the first place. And I will give you with that with people who are the ones who I see and met like the Andrews and Jeffs, because that's what I'm talking about. Pace is great. The community is fine. But I think the real power is the community, as we all know, and the people. And that's where I speak from, from that viewpoint. So how do we get a hold of you? On Instagram? Yeah, you can follow me on Instagram, most mellow, M-O-S-T-M-E-L-O. -E most mellow, most mellow. So if you guys are thinking about joining sub two, or if you guys are on the fence about joining sub two, have a conversation with Mello. We've connected really well here since he's been here, here in Houston. He's become a phenomenal friend. He's an amazing person. Like he said, he leads with value. He leads with his heart. So if he tells you, hey, you're probably not a good fit to join sub two, he, he genuinely means that. He's not doing any sales tactics or anything like that. You guys have any questions for Mello? Questions, comments? Cons time guys if you have just general questions about anything to do with real estate the floor is yours now what can we help you with you didn't have the mic when you said that but so now it's q a time so anyone has questions uh anyone have questions about their business anyone have questions about a deal anyone have questions about anything yeah, we're, we're not covering those topics or everyone is at, just at all everyone is just like doing great in their business everyone locked up a deal who locked up a deal this week there you go. Okay. You go. Did we? Did you guys? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, oh, that's right. The, okay. the short sale that snuck in. That's right. Who did not lock up a deal this week? Come on, Ray Yeah, Y'all don't have problems? Y'all don't have any questions? Uh, yes. Yeah, so you need a private money lender? Uh huh. Okay. So you, so I'm just going to repeat your question. And what was your name? Hamza. So Hamza is asking, he's looking for a private money lender. Um, I don't mean to be mean to Hamza, Hamza, but if I were a private money lender and somebody raised their hand and said, I need private money, no offense, Hamza, but I wouldn't lend to you. Right? Not because I don't know you, but because I don't have a relationship with you. If you want to, if anyone wants to raise private money here, you got to always start by raising private money by building a relationship with somebody. For the most part, all of the deals that I do and, and I get funding on, it's because I build a relationship with somebody and I go to them and say, hey, I have this deal, I have this opportunity. Do you know who I can lend? Do you know if anyone can lend money to me? So I have a conversation with these people first. I have a Rolodex of like 10 or 15 private money lenders, private money partners that I want to work with already. So don't find a deal, then find private money. You always have to do the opposite. You always have to build relationships with people. And that's why I come here because I want to build relationships with everyone. But at the end of the day, when I have a deal and I'm like, dude, I need to fund, I need to fund, I need to fund. It, it, it does get very challenging to where it's like, man, we're trying to help you get a fund, get a deal. And then it makes the deal look worse than what it probably is. So my advice to you is say, hey, build relationships with people. You may find a private money lender today. Great. But I would say, Build a Rolodex of five or six people. Build relationships with people. Because there's a lot of people with a ton of money in this room. And you just got to build relationships with people. It, it's, it's, one of, it's one of my big pet peeves when people are like, hey, I need private money like today. And sub two is phenomenal because sub two can, if you want money, you can get funded in sub two, but it's going to come at a cost. If you want good private money at good rates, you build relationships with people, you figure out how to provide value to people. And then when you need the private money, then you go approach them and say, hey, I have a relationship with you. Hey, I've probably done a deal with you already. Right. Any, any, any feedback on that? And, and probably the same advice can be said even for finding buyers. That's what we hear a lot is do, do I go find a deal first or I go find buyers? And what Andrew just talked about is like, yeah, you can find the deal and then find a lender, but it's probably going to be at higher rates. You don't have a lot of time to negotiate. You don't have time to go find other opportunities. 
and it's kind of similar to buyers. People are saying, well, Jeff, uh, is, is, is a deal worth 70% ARV minus repair, whatever the heck it is. And the answer is your end buyer is the one who determines what the deal is. So somebody who has a hedge fund who will lock it up for 90%, for example, or at least they used to, that guy is going to beat out everybody else who's still working with the 70% rate. So the point is what, what Andrew's making, I'm making, your private money lenders and your buyers, you need to simultaneously be building those relationships as you're seeking out deals. Those are most you, important, yeah. Right, because if you don't know who the buyers are and what they're willing to do, then you can't be entirely confident with what you contract and execute. Because think of it this way, you have that buyer, you're there trying to fill an order at the same time that you're trying to help the seller solve a particular problem. And if you're not the intermediary who can get this all connected and work out, then you can't monetize it. I, I, I think I scared everyone by that answer. <laughs> yeah. Correct. Don't let that stop you. 100%. Je Jennifer just said it. Don't let it stop you from making calls. The only reason I bring it up because I was in that same problem, right? And it's been easier for me to now find private money. So what's your question? What happens if you've never borrowed money from anyone else, but you have a deal? So I would say, and this is what Pace normally teaches, and I'm a big believer in that. I would say partner up with somebody that has borrowed money before. If, 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 if a lender, if a good lender is looking at you and looking at the deal, they're going to say, hey, I like the deal, but I don't know how much I like and trust you. There's lenders that straight out told me that. They're like, hey, I, I, who have you done a deal with? What, who, what lenders have you worked with in the past? And I say, hey, here are the three lenders I've done business with. Go call them. Because at the end of the day, they're always going to underwrite the deal, but they're also going to underwrite. And, and, and lenders will do this, on not, not intentional, but unintentional. They'll go through the process of, hey, how did I meet this guy? Where did I meet him? Did he just cold DM me? Did he just cold call me? Like, where did I meet this individual? And then they'll go back and they'll, unfortunately, they'll judge you at some point, right? So what I would say to answer that question is if you've never borrowed private money, yes, don't let that scare you from going and getting private money. But also don't let it scare you from partnering up with somebody to say, hey, I, I can't find private money, but you've been in sub two. You can probably get money. Let's partner up on the deal and let's raise private money together. That's what makes my job so much easier because I partner up with a lot of sub two students that have been in sub two for a lot longer and they have access to different things. So when I first my, raised my first private money, I was like, man, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I've borrowed money from a bank, but I've never borrowed it from a person. But because I was in sub two, I learned how to do it. I partnered up with somebody that's done it before. It made my job easier. So now I know it. Now I have those private money lenders that we're consistently paying every single month. Some, some lenders, they don't want to get paid at times, but we want to force ourselves to pay them. Sorry, that was an inside joke. Um, but I will say that to answer your question, hopefully I did a good job of answering it. I would say partner up with another sub two student. It's actually borrowed private money because then it makes the job easier. And you'll have the same effect depending on what product you're chasing after. So you may have a lot of success in single family. Well, we just got a lead on a 16 unit apartment complex yesterday. And you know that's not a particular product that I specialize in. I chase single family and land development, for example. So I'm pro even I'm probably better off squatting up with somebody who has more experience in multifamily, already has those resources, already has the track record. And what a lot of times I think people fear is the the analogy of, well, I can get the whole grape or half the watermelon. Mm -hmm. And we're so hell bent on, I don't want to leave any money on the table. It's like, well, it's, it's yeah, you're, you're, you're leaving such a huge amount of money on the table because you can lose the deal altogether. But to also think of it as like my grandmother used to say, like education is expensive and the school of hard knocks is a very expensive one. Like, aren't you better off squatting up with somebody who has the experience who can show you here's how it's done and then the next time a deal shows up yeah you can either partner with that person again or that experience paid you in so many dividends that that next deal that comes up you, you can take it down by yourself and find somebody else who generated the lead and kind of re redo that process is are there any sub two student sub two leaders here in the room that specialize in multifamily is there any of them here no Oh, they're in a different room. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, uh, that, that baby you had on your lap earlier, she specialized in multifamily. I mean, she has more units than I do, so I don't know. <laughs>
One more question. One more question. The newbies in the back that have never been here before. They're like, what the heck's going on? Oh, yeah. Come up here. <laughs> oh, that's all right. This is the second rule of power. Yeah. Never coming back. <laughs> second rule. Well, Erica, okay. uh, as you, you just said that because you've been called up, this is the last time you're coming. So I'm kidding. Ni nice to meet you. Sorry yeah. to see you go. But what uh, <laughs> what brought real. you to Power Hour? How'd you get here? So I'm actually so I actually want to own a residential assisted living. I'm an RN. Um, also interested in real estate investing, but I kind of got into the sub two world because I started listening to one of Pace's podcasts about creatively purchasing businesses. Um, so yeah, what wall was the question? Why am I here? Yeah. So <laughs> what what brought you out? Yeah. Sorry. How'd you okay. Find power so that's kind of how. Um, and then I started thinking, ooh, I could purchase a sub a uh, home sub two to convert into an assisted living if I don't find an existing assisted living for sale. So I'm actually wondering if anybody has creatively purchased businesses here as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. really? He is. He is oh. launching a podcast. So cool. you, you mentioned you're an RN. Um, kind of talk to me about your background a little bit and what obviously what brings you here. We know what your goals are, but what kind of brings you here? Are you trying to find people that buy businesses? Are you trying to, you know, find other partners that have properties that you could potentially partner up with or, or what, what's your goal? Um, that's a deep Kind of question. all over the place, I guess, because that's my ultimate goal. But I have partnered with a couple of ladies here recently and we're really looking to... Um, flip mainly for the capital mm -hmm. um and i do want passive rental income and ultimately do want to also open a residential assisted living but i am also kind of wanting to learn about how to find like either an equity partner or capital partner for the assisted living i want somebody more passive because i understand the operations of it and so I have all the experience, which I can capitalize on. I just don't have the money to purchase an existing. So is... if I knew of somebody, and I'm speaking to myself, if I knew of somebody that had a rental property that we're trying to rent, and it could be a potential assisted living facility, mm -hmm. would you be open to partnering up or at least, I don't know, I mean, we can discuss it later on. But well, I guess because I don't know anything about you know, residential assisted living. I'm okay. actually a physical therapist as well too. My oh, wife okay. and I are physical therapists, right? Okay, cool. So we're in the medical field, so we understand, understand that. Right. Hundred percent. Yeah. Right. I've been the into need. I was in like five this week. So but I've never jumped into that realm or that world. And we have a rental right now in New Caney. It's all flat. It's four bedroom, two thousand square feet. It's pretty it's pretty big for mm -hmm. the area. Mm -hmm. How would what would you what would be your buy box to be able to partner up with somebody? And then also what makes a good residential assisted living facilities in your eyes? So in the state of Texas, you can have up to 16 residents. Um, so I would, that's actually 16 kind of, residents per house or per room? Per house. Or per room? <laughs> no, no, no. It's a very is, large is, room. Is, is, no, yeah. is, 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 is it by the bedrooms or is it 16 in total? 16 residents total. So you can have shared rooms depending on where, like where you want to have the home your clientele like in usually you're going to want to be in an area where people can afford assisted living because it is private pay mm -hmm. the average is about 4500 a month per resident so you have to find people that can afford that because it's not it's not cheap um and um so most i'm sorry to say all that most of those people that are looking for their loved ones usually like their loved one having like their own room things like that and there are people that you know shared it, they're okay with that too so I guess to answer your question, it just kind of depends. I would want to have more private rooms and shared rooms because, like I said, that's usually what people are looking for more. Um, but you want to have kind of approximately about 300 square foot per person for that, like the size of the house is kind of mm -hmm. what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I would want, I would rather start to have big more residents because it just makes more sense. It's a lot, a lot of responsibility, a lot of liability, and it just doesn't, it's not worth it really to have like less than 10 residents. Got it. So, so how many could I fit in home. my four bedroom, 2000 square foot house? Yeah. I'm being selfish here guys, sorry. 
Um, I mean, you could probably do the master to be shared. I mean, I see people doing usually a four, two would probably be about like eight or so residents. I would think got it, got it. because you also want to have an attached garage. You can convert those to bedrooms and then you could probably add a bathroom maybe. So that's all what I'm looking at. You want to be in no HOA. You could do it in an HOA because elderly have rights, but they make your life like a living hell basically. Hmm. So it's just not worth it. Got it. Um, I would want to purchase in an, a home where I could add on to it if I didn't buy an existing. Has to have an attached garage in order to convert it. Um, so yeah. So I don't have my buy box quite yet, but that's I guess that's kind of it. Yeah, yeah. I would say narrow it down. So the narrow that you right. can get it. Obviously, you know, we're going to post this. So people are going to reach out to you, which we'll tell them how to reach out to you. <laughs> but people are going to reach out to you and be like, hey, you know, you're assisted living. But, but if you narrow your buy box in, mm -hmm. you, you can... People will bring you better quality right. leads as opposed to just, you know, like Jeff always likes to say junk sometimes. It's a pain yeah. in the butt. So, um, well, and I do see like creative deals that are posted in the Facebook group. It's like, this would be good for residential assisted living. It's like, no, it's like, no, it wouldn't. <laughs> why? I mean, why are you saying that? Like, you don't know. And I get it because you're trying to sell. <laughs> yes. Like, you're just, They're trying you're, to you're sell. You're marketing your um, product. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I understand. But like, no, you know? I know. <laughs> Trust me, <laughs> you get people on the free creative group where they'll post our stuff and they're like, they're selling it like a code dispo. And it's like, where did you get permission to sell this? Oh, I saw it on. No, no, you didn't. Just just say you messed up and yeah. take it off. Yeah. That's it. All right. Well, where can people get a hold of you? Where can we contact you? Instagram, Facebook? Um, yeah, on, on, I'm not on Instagram a whole lot, um, but I'm ETH327. And then on Facebook, Erica Herrera. A T H E T H E T H three two seven. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Got it. I'm a little slow. Sorry, guys. All right. So, do y'all know people that have purchased businesses creatively? Not yet, but we will get into that as a cool. So, the, actually, so I owned a business a while back. Um, learned a lot. <laughs> went through yeah. the went through there. Um, I owned a business for like four years. Uh, my wife, Jennifer, currently owns a bookkeeping business. Uh, we are starting to move into that avenue now of looking at buying businesses. So it's definitely, it's the new thing right now, but we're definitely moving that direction. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with us. This is episode zero for the Power Hour podcast. We will see you here next Saturday. Take